Hey, what's going on, everybody? Michael, back at you guys with a special guest, Tony, today. How you doing today, bro? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you very much for asking. How hey, no you? problem, man. I'm doing great, man. Thanks for being here today. So uh, we're looking at another episode of the game plan to successful civilian life, right? The transition out of the military. So you were kind enough to reach out and schedule this time. So I want to thank you for your service and for your time today. And just want you to uh, go ahead and open it up where you want to, to you know, let every, all the listeners know where you're from, what made you join the service, what branch where you're in, and then sort of like what your career looked like or your time in and lead us up to the point where you thought about getting out of the military. Okay. Um, so my name's Tony Rodriguez. I was originally born. I'm from Los Angeles, California, um, but... I haven't lived there in 23 years, so I don't. Uh, that's not home anymore. Um, okay. North Carolina is. I live up in Raleigh now, Raleigh, North Carolina, and I did 22 years in the military, and 21 of those years was at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. All the way, man. You got stuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I was at Fort Campbell, so I was your I was your bitter rival. Um, but uh, yeah, man, you got you got it in there for the long haul. Yeah. So um, you know, of course, got got. Sent there, I did, uh, I think, about five years in the 82nd Airborne Division, right? Um, and like everybody else, you know, I enjoyed my time. It was awesome. But once I left, I never wanted to go back to the 82nd, right? Yeah. Because um, I, I equated to being released from prison, right? Like, you know, <laughs> when yeah. you're in there, you're having a good time. But then you're released from prison. It's like, don't want to don't want to go back, right? So uh, yeah. I ended up over in civil affairs. I volunteered for that. And uh, I was a civil affairs medic and did another 16 years in the army as a special operations medic. Okay. And then uh, I, I have to admit uh, about year 10, when I decided to go indefinite, that's when I uh, realized that I needed a plan, an escape plan okay. out of the military because uh it could end at any time, right? Because I saw some of my friends getting injured, so they were being medically retired, and they weren't set up. They they were relying on their pension, right? Right. And they weren't they weren't going to get the full pension anymore. Right. Um, so they were a little worried, and they always planned, "Well, you know, I have time to go to school. I'll do it later, later." Well, later ended. Um, so I decided at that time, you know, the best part about being in the army when we were in is uh the internet, right? And uh education that you could do over the internet, right? Right. Distance education. So I took advantage of that on my deployments and, uh, you know, got, got my bachelor's and my master's degree while I was in. And, uh, you know, when I got out, like we were talking before we started, I just, I knew I had to do something. Um, because, uh, you know, I have PTSD like a lot of us do. Right. Yeah. And the way, the way I was dealing with it before was I was just trying to drink myself, uh, numb every day right yeah um, so i haven't had a, a drink in about seven years now and i knew that once i got out i needed to stay occupied doing anything i didn't care what it was um even if i was you know just being a volunteer gardener for my neighborhood right that would have been yeah. enough um just so i had something to do because if i didn't i was probably going to start drinking again i well, first of all, appreciate you sharing that information, man, because I'm sure that something that you struggle with, obviously, for all that time. I mean, me too, in the military, alcohol was like, yeah, you're, that's what you did on the weekends all the time. And you, you definitely overly abuse it, man. You get up and do the same thing the next day, kind of like get caught in that vicious cycle. But when I got out of the military, I try to deter myself off that. But um, man, it's, it's definitely hard, right? It's, you know, a lot of people get down that road and it's hard to dig themselves out what what made you sort of flip the switch and go the other way um you know um so my my kids you know I, I i didn't want them to have to live through that seeing their father just throw his life away yeah and and you know my best friend my brother drew um he was my first sergeant but we went through the civil affairs course together and he stuck with me um through all of it he helped me pick myself back up and we we still talk i don't know daily yeah um, he, he lives on the other side of the country now out in idaho um but he he's my brother he's not just my friend and uh, he helped me get through that hey man respect to respect to him too so always good to have someone like that in, in your corner and it seems like what everyone can say about the military is like you all everyone sort of 
had that bond with people that we serve with, right? Like, you know, they're not just like your friends out here in the civilian sector that you have that true ultimate bond, that, you know, they're going to be with you through thick and thin. So it's nice to hear that you guys still got that going on. Um, did, what, did, what did the transition look like out of civil affairs? And like, did, do they sort, did you have mentors along the way setting you up after that, after that in deaf mark? Because definitely, I mean, that's pretty good that you even thought about that at 10 years knowing that you had 10 more years in because you could have waited i mean you know and then like you said the time would just fly by and then you'll be on the way out so who knows what that would have looked like so props to you for doing that as well but what did it look like along the way for the next 10 or so years before you got out um so to be honest no there were no mentors right because you know the mission the mission's priority you have to keep going right and you know back at that time it was still the height of um it was the rise of isis right yeah, and then you still had the war going on in uh, Afghanistan, and uh, so no, there were no mentors, right? You just had to figure it out for yourself. Um, but the one thing for me, you know, my parents, you know, they came from Mexico, right? So um, they both had like a sixth grade education. Yeah. Um, so they really emphasized uh, education. They, you no, know, what, what were they going to tell me, right? They they didn't know anything, but they knew very little. So the only thing they could ever tell me was be a doctor or be a lawyer because to them that was successful. Right. Right. But what they were trying to say was just continue with your education, whatever it is, just keep going to school. Like we know you don't like it. We know it, it, it takes a lot out of you, but just keep going. Um, so that's what I did. Right. And uh, like I said, I, I got a bachelor's in just criminal justice because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I figured it would be something. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, but in my job in civil affairs, you got to go, uh, throughout the world and we got to work with uh, local governments and I realized that uh, a degree in public administration would be you know really helpful um, wasn't really sure what it was but I figured I started looking up jobs and seeing that people were wanted this degree um, so I just went in and decided to knock that out and granted it was a two-year degree and it took me five years but you know I finished yeah. it right regardless yeah. of who cares if it took five or ten years right right get through man complete yeah. the task yeah good for you so so for me that's what I was looking for and then uh I, I really appreciate my sergeant major when I told him hey because uh, I was the first sergeant right and my body was just breaking down I, I couldn't go anymore like my shoulders are shot yeah they're, they're done and I told him hey I'm just gonna retire so he's like okay um do your change of responsibility and then you have a year to transition out i'm not going to bother you i might have like small things for you to do here and there um but you go do your um internship if that's what you okay. want to do go learn how to do resumes find somebody it's like you're i'm not going to give that information to you i'm not going to dedicate anybody to that to you but i'm going to give you the time so you could find it right and so i appreciated that because i did i went to go get my uh the project management uh uh, the PMP certification. Okay. And, you know, I really wasn't sure what that entailed, but again, I started looking up on, on uh, what is it, Indeed and ZipRecruiter. And I saw that a lot of places want a PMP certification. Um, so I just decided, hey, I'm going to go do that. And, uh, you know, it, it's a long test. You sit there for four hours, but it's definitely, it's like an extra, I don't know, $20,000 a year. So it's a certification definitely worth it. And if the military, the military paid for that. So I, I appreciate that, you know. What what program did you use? Because I know there's quite a few out there to get that going, but what'd you end up using personally? Do you remember? Yeah, oh yeah. So I went to uh um onward to opportunity. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I've heard of them. That's out of IVMF, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. A great, great, great programs. Man, I've been to a couple uh, the entrepreneurship boot camp for veterans, and then they have another one for veteran small veteran businesses that are uh, you know, small businesses that they had a meet up in Austin. So good for you, man. Like, like you can't go wrong. It's, it's free. And you're going to, you add so much to your, to your, to your arsenal, right? Like you said, it's highly, it's highly sought after. And like, you can make, I mean, if you, if you like stack that and you're in it, you're making like six figures from like home. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's multiple yeah. opportunities. So good for you, man. Did you put that thing to use when you got out or did you just like keep it? Did you just have it? What did it look like when you got it? What else uh, did you do in that year? Did you start your disability claims? Did you did you even I mean, you're in civil affairs. So, I mean, I, I can only assume, but I'm going to ask you, what did uh, the sick call protocol look like then? I'm, I'm, we touched on a little bit. It's like 
keep going the mission, mission, mission. So I'll leave it to you though. But what, no, what if- so it, it's great, right? Because in civil affairs, each team has a medic. The bad thing is, um, because so they'll help you out, they'll treat you there in the team room. The bad thing is, it doesn't get uploaded into your medical records, right? So yeah, if it's not in your medical records, it really didn't happen, right? Um, so my case was a little bit different, right? Because I, I submitted my uh, retirement paperwork and the army kicked it back and they said that I was, I had to wait three months before I could uh, submit it, right? And it got all the way up to the department of the army, but I had my timeline, right? I, yeah. I wanted to be out in August of 2022. Um, I knew my shoulders were bad. So I just went back to sick call and we started a, a, a med board. Okay. Um, because I already had about two years worth of uh, treatment on my shoulders going into sick call and the Clark Clinic had MRIs and the PA there told me it's like, you know, I was 48 at the time. It's like, do you have the shoulders of a 90 year old? Like, it's, yes. amazing. it's like, okay. Um, so she said, Hey, we'll just put you in for the med board. And it, it was pretty automatic once I was in. They said, like, yeah, there's, there's, you, you should have been out a few years ago. Like the fact that you're in is there's something wrong. Somebody should have caught this a few years ago. What that, what that ended up looking like you got a med, you got a med board then approved pretty fast or what that, how'd that turn out? So they were right. This new med board process, it was, I was entered in on March 8th and I signed out for terminal leave on August 18th. Pretty so fast. About, yeah. Not about six, like six months. months. Oh, six months. Yeah. Six, six, yeah. seven months. Yeah. Were you ready? I mean, were you, did you, did you know when like it was going to happen or did they sort of tell you last minute? Were you like hanging around? Did you have a plan? What would that look like? So I did my internship during that time. And uh, the good thing about the med board process is they held my hand through the VA claim. Right. Okay. Um, who held uh, your hand? Who held it? Um, I forgot who it was, but it was, uh, the person that the Peblo, they assigned me. They assigned oh, me. Oh, okay. Person. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when I when I initially set up my claim, I, I was claiming about 16 items. And then when we sat down after we talked about it for sat there for about an hour, it ended up being about 31 different items. I can only imagine, man, all those years, man. Like you said, you sh- everything's like worn down, If you know, on top of your mental, on top of everything. You know, I, I did eight years and I still and I had my fair share of things. So yeah. what um so you so. You had no first time go then when you got all that stuff back from the VA, you were satisfied with what they gave you? Yeah. The funny thing is uh, the VA was, um, it was, it was pretty straight. Like they let you know before you're out, like, Hey, this is what your rating is going to be. We can't guarantee it. Um, but you know, mine was a hundred, a hundred percent. Um, but the med board in the army, right. It goes to a, a board out in San Antonio and there's three people on this board and they have to vote, right? You just need a majority oh. vote. Okay. Right. And two of them said, yes, this guy needs to be out. Like his shoulders are bad. We're not even looking at the rest of his file. We're just looking at his shoulders. What the other guy say, or the girl, what the other one said. Like, he's like, nope, good, good to continue. Don't worry about it. It's like, what? How do you hear? How'd you hear that? But how did I never even knew that they did that for a med board, honestly. So that's kind of crazy in itself. It's like a boxing match or something. Or they don't even know who you are, though. It's like, like an E7 yeah. board or something like that. But yeah, it was bro, insane. Bro. And so, both of my shoulders are, I, I need them replaced, right? Okay. I need, I need new shoulders, but I was told, Hey, you're too young to get it. You're only, I'm 49 now. It's like, we want you to wait till you're 60. Um, because the surgery is only good for about 15 years. So if you get it now, you're going to need it again at about 63. And, uh, we don't want you to do that. And <laughs> the doc was at least was honest. Like if you get it at 60, let's be honest, you're probably not going to live to your 75. So you're good. Right. It's like, well, <laughs> we, so short, man. Come on, man. Come on. So, but I appreciated his honesty. It's like you know what? You're like the one doc that I've had that was honest. So you know, thank thanks for that. Thanks for at least you know giving to me straight. That's fair. So so what uh what you what you do your internship in when you were getting out? So again, I just went for that PMP because it's only a week. Uh, it's a week of like the actual class. Okay. But then the army gave me the rest of the time to study on my own because that test, it, it's, it's not hard, but it definitely isn't easy, right? Because it's multiple choice, but 
all four answers are correct. So you have to pick which one is more correct. Yeah, to get you, it's kind like of sneaky. It's like the, it's like yeah. the, yeah, I got you. What would, what would be some good advice that you would give someone if they wanted to go for their PMP exam? That looking just, back, you did. So you have a year to uh, take that test. Just take your time and, and take the test when you're ready. And uh, don't overthink the questions. They're, it's, they're not out to, they want people to pass, right? Because if you pass, then you can join their association and you pay them their annual fee. Right. So they, they want you to pass. Um, so don't overthink the questions. Okay. What what did you do after you got out then after you got your disability rating and every, and after you went on like terminal leave and what what that what what ended up happening next? So before I start I got my notice uh, that I was going to be out. I signed out in August 18th. I got my notice July 18th, right? Okay. And so in June I started applying for uh started applying for jobs. And uh my resume wasn't the best. I used uh what is it? This program online, Zeti, Z-E-T-Y. It, it helps to put your resume into a nice little format, right? Like it doesn't, you have to put in, like write in what you want on your resume, but it, it puts it in a nice format. So when recruiters look at it, it's not just a page of like 10,000 words jammed together, you know? Yeah. So uh, that's why I use that program. And uh, I, I was telling my friend, you know, I knew I wanted to work. I didn't care what I did. Uh, I just wanted to do something. And uh, so I probably filled out in a month, 70 job applications. What kind and, of work were you looking at? All, all different stuff, all, all different areas. So because of my shoulders and my back and my hips, uh, it was, it was going to be office work. Okay. Lot, I was looking for stuff in uh, local government and state government. And of course, you know, I'm, I was here at Fort Bragg. So, you know, why not apply for contractor jobs? Because it's right. something I know, right? And yeah. uh, my biggest fear is getting out. Like I knew I was prepared uh, with my education, with my PMP, with that. My fear was, regardless of what anybody says, I was in the military for 22 years. I was brainwashed, right? Um, because you kind of have to be, right? Yeah. We're in the military. You, when you go into combat, you can't sit there and have a debate on what we're going to do, right? You just yeah. you have to follow orders. Right. Right. And so you start using the knife edge and start, you know, maybe using curse words when you shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, um, so for me, I made a conscious effort in that last year to like limit how much I cursed, keeping my hands in my pocket so I'm not talking, pointing at people or using the knife edge. Yeah. Right. Because people on the outside world, they're, they're going to look at, look at you like you're a freak if you're talking to them like that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But choosing the contractor job, uh, I looked at that route as a way to ease my way into regular life. Um, so I could still practice being uh, just a normal person, working with normal people who were never in the military before. But – if I use my knife edge, you know, I'm not going to get a, a complaint in HR. If I let a swear word out, you know, nobody's going to get upset at me, you know. Right. Um, so for me, I, I went the contractor route, um, at least for this first year, just so I could ease into um, regular life. And I've learned a lot from my coworkers who have never been in the military before. That's what you what uh, industry did you end up going into? So I, I'm a, I'm basically a teacher. I, I teach uh, like geopolitics to the psychological operations soldiers here on Fort Bragg okay. and, and cultural, uh, give them cultural training on just where they're going into Latin America or into um, the South Pacific, into Asia, just stuff on that on just, this is what you do. This is what you shouldn't do. Just, you know, it's how, nothing complicated. How do you like it? So it's okay. And like I said, for me, it, it's great because it was able, I was able to continue to do something that I was used to. Right. Um, but it allowed me to, you know, you still have those crazy officers that come in <laughs> like, Hey, you need to do this. It's like, uh, no, I don't work for you. So I no, I really don't. And it's like, and they don't know how to understand. They don't know how to interpret that. Right. Um, yeah. Right. I had I had an E7 just uh, yesterday come through the hallway and I don't know what was going on, but there was something going on outside. It's like, hey, everybody needs to be outside. It's like, 
uh, okay. And he got upset. It's like, hey, I'm telling you, you need to get up and go outside. It's like, yeah, yeah I'm working. Like, I'm not going to stop working. You thought you were about to get up and start run, double timing outside like like you're in uniform or something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. and, and it was good for me to realize that I can say no now. Like, just because I have a boss doesn't mean, like, there's no more this, there's no longer the sphere of, hey, you better do what I say or you're going to get an Article 15. Right. But no, in the contracting world, have you ever, because I did contract a little bit after I got out as well. Um, it's kind of weird in a way that uh, a lot of people do think that you're just going to follow what they do. And, and when you do stand up and sort of try to put your foot down because maybe you don't think something's right. They look at you like you're the crazy one, essentially. So, yeah. but I, I, I've dealt with that. Uh but you just sort of look back at it and laugh now. But it's sometimes people are. I didn't even really want to do it at first because like it's confrontational. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be me regardless. And in the, in the military, sometimes that could bite you in the behind, especially in the regular army. I'm not so much probably in the, in the soft community because you guys are more like on a team basis. Sometimes in the regular army, there's just there's bad there's bad too. But I don't know what your take is on that. You know, on the on the contracting world. So. Um so the army's the army, right? Everybody says that about well, the soft's different. It's like yeah, well, I guess so. That, I guess I do, man. That is the perception, yeah. probably, for most yeah. people. Yes, yeah. you have crazy officers and crazy NCOs everywhere. You know, that doesn't sure. because it's not like people just coming off the street and all of a sudden, hey, you're over in soft, right? Like that's true. Majority of the people come from you know right, the regular force and then carry that mentality over. And okay, sure, whatever. Um, but for me in the contracting, um, so, you know, I looked at different positions uh, and where I ended up was, was right fit for me because it was um, a program. It's, that's all we do is cultural training, geopolitics and language training, right? Um, it's, we're not, we're not worried about operations. We're not worried about the training that the soldiers are doing, jumping out of airplanes, going to ranges, None of that. All, all we're doing is just preparing them to how can you go and talk to a populace and not offend them? No, it's like it's like nonstop sergeant's time training, you know, but you just yeah. got to do the same couple things for different areas. Not bad. I mean, it's niche down to what you guys specialize in. So without the formation. And so I guess it's a, a good way that you sort of found to decompress from doing what you did for 22 years so interesting to hear that uh, concept and use contracting for a, a, a segue through i guess so you think it's helped you in, in that in that manner for the time you've been on you like this is pretty good you're getting used to it and sort of just like losing touch with that those 22 years since you're still freshly out sort of so i don't think i'll ever lose complete touch with it um you know because it's ingrained at this point you know um, but it has helped me out because what I realized, like, you, you know, I'm sure at Fort Campbell, you guys had that, um, you know, something comes down at 1700, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is an emergency. It's like, well, what's going on? The vehicles aren't online. Oh, so everybody has to go out there and get the vehicles <laughs> online, right? Yeah. And it, it helped me realize that not everything is an emergency. Like, you now I understand what emergency actually is, you know, right. The law need to, needing to be mowed. No, that's, that's, that can wait like that, that who cares, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, it, it's this past year has helped me out a good deal just to decompress, slow down, spend time with my family and just do things that I want to do. And, you know, my job, I enjoy my job. But that's no longer my identity where before it was. Yeah, you're not carrying that home with you having your phone. Yeah, like you said, you're a first sergeant, so your phone's always ringing. I talked to a star major, and he was saying uh, he used to be like go crazy when his phone used to ring when he was in the service. So I'm sure you had like the same thing. You know, you'd be sitting around 18, 1900, even or two o'clock in the morning, that thing might ring, and you just back back to it, man. Like you never stop. So that's got to be something you got to get getting used to, I guess. But what was something that you struggled with the most when you first got out mentally? Was there something mentally there? Or was there something maybe in another aspect that, that you struggle with? 
So two things, right? The silence, um, because like you just said, right, that phone's always going, right? Yeah. And then you have emails coming in left and right all the time. And when you're out, when you decide that, hey, that's it, you've had enough, it all just stops. And then reality sets in that the army is going to keep going. The military is going to yeah. keep going. You're not that important. Yeah. Right. And then the biggest thing was um, getting out. You realize not everybody that you worked with in your unit were your friends. The majority of them, the majority of them were your coworkers and their acquaintance. Yeah, exactly. There's right. a big difference. Most definitely, man. They say if you can count your good on your real friends on like your on one hand, you're lucky. You know what I mean? There's only yeah. you're only gonna have them few, but so you found out just as you were turning and turning everything off, right? Like, all right, I'm I'm getting around, you're you're checking out, you had that year, you sort of took care of you. Did did that year go by fast for you or did it sort of trickle down? No, it went by fast. And then uh those last 30 days, because in the med board process, right? Like they you get notified, hey, that's it, you're done. And they literally give you 30 days to clear posts, to clear posts and everything like that. You're done. You have to sign out on terminal leave within 30 days. That's crazy, man. So you, so from the time you turned in your med board packet until they noticed, notified you, how long was that? Like, cause I know you said March to like, so they, they told like how a couple months or. No. So I, I started March 8th and then on July 18th, that's when they told me, okay, hey, you're you. done. You're done. And then that's when I had to be out by August 18th. You got to be out. Yep. That's crazy, man. That's such a, it's, you know, yeah, you got your disability rating and stuff like that, but still like, you got to like, what'd you, do you play, you stayed in place and you're out, you're, you just stayed at Bragg then you got your job and everything like that. But I mean, if you had to leave, that'd be crazy. Like, you know, a household goods got to come and do your last move and do your pack out. So for you, you, you just stayed put, but still it went by fast. Like looking back at it, what would you what would you wish you what's some things that you wish you would have known even not even just getting out the military in general you know put it all in the same nutshell what are some things that you wish you would have known looking back at it um from even from the med board process and exit in the military so the biggest thing is every you know for me i was worried about like where am i going to live do i have to move right now like do i have yeah. to know um what i didn't realize is once you get out you have three years from the time you you I don't know if it's when you um, ETS, but I know once you uh, retire, you have three years from that date to have the movers come move you. Okay. Right. So I I, I could have stayed there. I, I purchased a new house, moved up to Raleigh. So I had the army move me just um, last month. Okay. Um, but even with that, like you can file an extension and uh, keep it, keep that op- option open for six years. Like the military will move you for you know, up, up until six years, okay. anywhere, anywhere in the world. So if you don't know where you want to live, where you want to work, don't move right away. Just stop and think about it. And then, uh, you know, cause how much does the mover cost? How many tens thousands. of thousands of dollars? Yeah. Do you have? Depending on where you're going, thousands. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, cause my plan, I, I wanted to move to Hawaii, right? Okay. My kids, my kids are grown. So I wanted to go live out in Honolulu and, my wife's like, nah, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> so I was saving that. So I was like, yeah, we'll just have the army move us out there. That that would be great, you know. That, yeah. Uh, but we just ended up moving up here to Raleigh, and uh, e- even with that, that was good because again, my my when I was twenty five, yeah, or even when I was thirty, I could move everything in my house by myself. Now that I'm yeah. forty nine and everything's broken, I can't. I just yeah. can't, you know. And, yeah. I just moved. I'm, I was 34 when I did it. And man, I had the U-Haul, but my back was broken the next day, man. Those are some, yeah, it, it, that doesn't, that youth doesn't last forever. That's for sure, man. The army, the army or the military doesn't really help your body stay intact if you stay in for longevity either. So true indeed. What, um, what's some of the programs that you used on the way out minus the PMP, uh, the onward to opportunity what else did you use did you use any va benefits for school did you use a home loan the the home loan or anything like that you want to touch on yeah so um i actually um you know everyone talks uh about sfl tap that you don't get what you need right well it's it's meant to cover everybody right so if you were did four years in the military and you just 
were a specialist in E4 getting out, or if you did 30 plus years and you're retiring as a command sergeant major, right? It, it's fit, It's meant for everyone. Granted, there's different levels, right? But you get out of it what you put into it, right? So for me, um, the biggest thing I wanted was uh, the brief from the VA about the VA. And that's where I learned about the, the vocational training, right? Yeah. And uh, so I went in there and uh, I, the the person who was helping me, she was great. And she looked at my case and she, she's like, Mr. Rodriguez, like, you're killing me, right? Like, like you, you, you have your education, you have your PMP, like, what, why do you want this training? Yeah. <laughs> It's like, well, I mean, it's, 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 an, it's afforded to me. Right. So yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. And I told her, it's like, look, I, I get it. If you're going to tell me no, but you have to tell me no. Right. right. Like right. I, I'm going to apply for it because it's, I'm a veteran and it's there for me. And, uh, I, I didn't qualify for the program, but she was at least kind enough to help me out to get me some, uh, stipends for my school books, which I appreciated, you know, cause yeah. book, books are expensive. And I understand where she's coming from, uh, but it's not like there's, you know, it's a limited amount of veterans that could use this. It's not like oh, only the first thousand can use it, right? So I'm not, yeah, I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't taking from anybody. We can all use it if we want to. Dude, you're probably doing them, a, you would probably be doing them a service by using it because it's never, the number, that that thing never exceeds what it's, it's you know, meant to be. Like you just said, there's, they're way under the threshold of compared veterans that use programs and benefits compared to the people that don't like there's way more veterans that don't use programs like that than there are. So I, I was just, I'm curious because even if you did have a PMP, like if you did VR and E and just told them you wanted to go to school, but you, like you said, you already have like a master's degree unless you said you wanted to, it would have to be something that, because that VR and E is a reemployment program. Like they want yeah. you to get back in the workforce. You know, it's not really just for the education. So it's not like if you, if you go use your GI bill, they're not going to definitely tell you no, because that's, they don't have no say so in that, you know, you don't meet with a case manager for a, for a, the GI bill. But I mean, at least you got your books paid for. I even had a friend tell me that they wrote to the VA and they got an extra year of school paid for. And I said, dude, are you serious? And he said, yeah, I'm being dead serious. So, I mean, I don't know if it, how how true that is, but according to him, he got it. So, I, I can believe it because uh, the lady she was she was trying to work with me, right? Because she was trying to tell me, I was like, look, this is meant to um, get you training, to get you back in the workforce, or if there's something, if your uh, disabilities prevent you from doing your current job, right? So, right. if you can tell me how your your disabilities prevent you from doing your current job, then, you know, I can get you into the program. And I, for me, I didn't, I, I know people say, just say whatever you have to, so you can get into the program. But, uh, you know, I just didn't feel comfortable telling her, um, just making up a story. And I, I mean, I sit at a desk all day, right? I mean, yeah, not good for you though, man. Cause it's, it's definitely not about like lying, um, at all to tell the truth. And if you can get it, you can get it. But, like if you were, if you didn't have that job though, they would have got you on board. You know, if you didn't have like any schooling and stuff like that and you came out and you were working labor job and you, and you have your shoulders just, you know, with the service connection and stuff like that, they would, they would get you on board. So, yeah. You know. So I, uh, I did use the, 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 um, home loan again, cause okay. I had my, my first home loan. Um, I'm still paying that off. Okay. But we wanted to buy a second home, right? And we qualified for that. So now I have two with the VA. Nice. And uh, the second one that I have down in Fayetteville, we're just running that out. Great, dude. That's uh, yeah. I, how you like that? Good, right? Yeah, it's good. I'm now, granted, the interest rate right now is ridiculously high. But, right. um, you know, once it comes back down, we'll just refinance that and it, it won't be a big deal. Not bad, man. Good for you. Uh, it's yeah. always good to get that real estate uh, game going. What, um, what's some, what's some things you wish you would have known before you got out, like, uh, on the, on the medical side for people just, you know, uh, that may be struggling with that. They may be in the civil affairs community or the special ops or whatever that may not get their stuff in the records. Because I talked to a Lieutenant Colonel yesterday, a retired Lieutenant Colonel Elise, and she said the same thing. She went on a deployment with special forces and not, sometimes their stuff never made it into like the, uh, the system so yeah so definitely if you when you start thinking about retiring 
I'd say, cause I never went, I never went to sick call. I always just saw the team medic. Right. And yeah. nothing. And it was, I'd say 2019, I retired in 2022 and 2019 is when I finally, 2020 is when I finally started going. Right. Uh, and from 2020 to 2022, I had him look at my shoulders, my back, my hip, my knee, uh, my sinuses, because you know, we were, everybody's in Iraq or Afghanistan by those burn pits. Right. Yeah. And I have sinus pressure. That's horrible. Right. And so right. It's like, the VA, well, you have to prove to me that the burn pits aren't responsible for that. I don't have to prove to you. Right. You know? And so I, I just started getting everything documented and I kept going back um, because just going in once saying, hey, my back hurts isn't going to do it. Like you have to have an x-ray, an MRI. And I had to go to uh, physical therapy, which was a pain in, pain in the rear. Right. But yeah. I went. I went um, so I could get every so I could prove that I had these injuries. And it, it took two, three years, but my packet wasn't that thick, but what it, but it was thorough. Right. And that's all you really need. What made, what made you turn that switch on after all those years? What was the aha moment? Like, Oh, sh I gotta, I gotta start going, getting this documented. I, I just was having a lot of trouble. One night I woke up and I looked at my bed and I realized that I, was building a fort with pillows, right? Yeah. Cause I had to position pillows to support my shoulders up and my and position and support my hips so I could sleep. Okay. Uh, cause if not, I was just in a tremendous amount of pain at night and I wouldn't be able to sleep. And I thought maybe this isn't normal. Maybe normal people don't sleep like this. <laughs> and I said, maybe I'll go in and see if they can, I don't know, do something more than just give me Motrin, you know? Yeah. And I just happened to get a new PA and she's like, Oh no, like, yo, yeah, we got to check this out. Cause like you, your shoulder, just by checking it out, it, it's, it doesn't sound good. Like it shouldn't crash and pop when you move it. Yeah. Did they, did they tell you to fill out a hurt feelings report? No. However, <laughs> um, when I went in for my back, right. Um, it, my PA wasn't there that day. So I had another one and, uh, I told her, it's like, yeah, my lower back, it's just killing me, you know? And, uh, she looked at me and she's like, well, no, I played tuba in the marching band in, uh, college. <laughs> it's like, and my back hurts. You don't hear me complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And like... the nurse, the nurse that was in there, ran out because she said you turned red instantly and the veins in your forehead and your neck just popped out instantly so she ran out to go get the the oic of the um the clinic oh what'd that look like um so when he came in i was like i was already losing my mind and lighting her up and uh, yeah whoa, whoa whoa calm down calm down and uh I said, look, man, I just, can, can I get an x-ray? That's all I want. Can I get an x-ray? Like, I'm not, I don't, I know you're not going to cure my pain here today. Yeah. Can you do something be besides Motrin and Icy Hot. And uh, he pushed her out and then he saw me and we went that route. X-ray, went to physical therapy, got an MRI. And then turns out it's like, oh yeah, your disc from your L1 to your S1 are all compressed. And they look like a, the, the jolly filling out of a donut that's squeezed being squeezed out. Yeah. Uh, they're like, you should be in immense pain in your legs. Like you, like your nerves are just totally compressed. It's like, wow. Uh, okay. Well, I guess I'm glad I'm not like, I don't know what to say. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. At that point, you just dumbfound like for words, like, okay, what do you want me to tell you? Good. I mean, yeah. wow. That's a, that's a wild one. What, uh, what are you up to now? What are you up to nowadays? What you got going on? So, um, you know, still going to school. Um, but along with that, you know, I started a podcast, um, FTU, Life After the Military. And uh, FTU, it's something I learned at, at Fort Benning when I was there for basic training. Um, the people that would go in and they, they couldn't pass their initial um, physical fitness assessment, right? Um, they would send them to FTU. And I heard the drill sergeants eventually talk about it. FTU stood for uh, fat, tired, and useless, right? 
Okay. I was going to ask you what that. I was trying to like figure out that uh, abbreviation, but I'm g- glad you told me, man. I got you. Never heard that before. And uh, so, uh, you know, while I was in the army, I, I thought it was funny, right? But then getting out, I realized, um, you know, I'm not being as active as I was while I was in the army, you know, not doing road marches, not jumping out of airplanes. And so I started feeling really sluggish. And uh, I just started feeling fat, right? So I started exercising again. And I figured if I'm feeling like this, I, I would assume that there are uh, veterans out there that feel like this as well. So I started this podcast to uh, just talk about mental health because, you know, being in the military, that's something that nobody ever wants to talk about. But we should because when you get out, it all catches up with you. And, you know, I have a lot of friends that uh, – Either they took their lives or they're just drinking themselves, trying to drink themselves to death. And we have quite a few people who just can't make that transition out just because they're not dealing with their their problems, their issues. Just trying to mask it, just trying to yeah. drink it away. Yeah, sorry to sorry to hear that, man. I'm in the same boat. I'm sure a lot of people out there are, you know, that are that are involved in the military community. Just know about people taking their life or doing, you know, like you said, drinking themselves into the ground, man. Like it's, it's sickening, you know, but you're right. I I felt like that, man. I probably sometimes feel like that now, you know, it's definitely a crazy transition from PT and doing all this stuff all the time, every day, being on your feet, going nonstop every day. So what was something that helped you like not feel like you're fat, tired and useless? What'd you start doing minus like PT and stuff like that? What'd you do to get out of that mindset? So for, for me, right, I, I have to do stuff, right? So, um, you know, I, I love running. I was, was a runner before I came into the military. And so this year I decided, hey, you know what? This is going to be the year that I qualify for the Boston Marathon. Nice. Right. Well, will I do it? I, I, I don't know if I'll do it because, that I mean, for my age, even at my age, it's still like three hours and 20 minutes. You know, that that's hauling. And, yeah. Uh, do it, man. My dad did that when he was young. When he when he was doing coming up, he did he ran that thing a few times. He was born in Boston, so do that thing, man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know that that's you know I'm focusing on that. I have my grandkids now, so they keep me occupied. My grandson was over last night, and he was only for he was only over. I watched him myself for like two hours, but it seemed like it was you know, 20 years watching an infant, you know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> always on watch, man. Every second, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. that's good though. What, uh, where can they find, where can people find your podcast at where you got that going? So, um, anywhere you can find podcasts, you can find mine. Um, I started up on Podbean, and I, I love that app, uh, because it pushes it out to everywhere to Apple podcasts, Okay. Um, Spotify to iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, you name it. it. It, I googled it right before we started, and like the first ten options are all my podcasts on different um, different venues. All right, I'm about to get. I'm about to get with you on that one offline sometime. Uh, how's that podcast been going for you? You like doing it? So, I, I really enjoyed doing it. I enjoy having people on there, but it started becoming a second job. And because everybody who comes on, they're volunteering their time, right? So I'm going to yeah. uh, go by their schedule. So there are times when I was at work and I'd have to go to lunch and set up my uh, little mobile, my computer, my mic, and use my Wi-Fi or my uh, phone and just set it up in my car, right? Because yeah. they're out. And it, it, it was started becoming too much because I would have six interviews in a day and I'm waking up at six in the morning so I could do an interview and then doing another one at, you know, 11 o'clock at night. Cause they're yeah. on the East coast and it was, it just started becoming too much. So uh, once I started doing my, uh, I entered my PhD program, I realized, well, I'm going to do more podcasts just with me um, talking about topics that I think are important for sure. And if I can get somebody on a guest, then I will, but it'll have to be 
something that works with my schedule. So like on your time, weekend. yeah, just make the calendar that it works on your time and send that yeah. thing out because you're right, man. If you send, like I did the same thing. I had an open schedule and that thing filled up crazy. Like you're right, like seven, eight people in a day, man. My my back was shot the first day. I couldn't even move, man. I was yeah. like, holy crap, dude. Like ain't gonna be too many more days like this, but you know, it was it was like a fire in the hole type of thing. How many episodes you got? You got a lot of episodes? Because if you're taping like that, dude, that's a that's a lot. So I'm I'm up at about 60 episodes now because um, right. at first I started doing two episodes a week, then it was three, and again uh, after the the first of the year I, I I cut it back down to just one one a week um, okay. because that's manageable and um it, it just started getting to the point where it almost started being too much. Yeah, um, because I also started noticing that not as many people were downloading it. So, is it really serving a purpose anymore? Sometimes less is more. Uh, yeah, true indeed. What uh, what was your favorite place you've been in the military? What time you were in? Um, so I deployed eleven times. Um, oddly enough, I think my last deployment to Iraq in two thousand eight was my favorite, um, and that's because of the people that I was with. Okay. Not not so. I mean, it's Iraq, right? You're, yeah, yeah. you're getting shot at. You're getting bombed. Uh, but the people that I was with, um, still talk to quite a few of them today. That's good. What's your uh, one word to describe your military service? Just honor. I mean, there's no other way to put it. You know. Yeah. What was your favorite food that you ever had? prepared on a military installation oh so <laughs> the reason why i loved um that rotation in iraq was because we became really good friends with the the head cook out there right and yeah. you know those in the military right you can't get your sunny side up no you can't get your eggs sunny side up right and right your, right your steaks they're gonna be burnt right yeah yeah and, yeah uh, so the catch cook um his name was yeti right and we became good friends. We'd take him out to the range and we'd let him shoot our, our weapons. He wasn't in the military, so he, he was excited, right? And uh, yeah. so he'd go in there and just, hey, Yeti, can I get some sunny side up eggs? Say, yeah, don't worry about it. I, I know that's pretty plain, pretty boring, but when you're in Iraq for like nine months and to get something like that, that was that was special. That was really made my day. Nah, man, you gotta, I was, that's what I was in the army. I was food service. So you gotta have them cooks in your back pocket, man. You get, you get hooked up especially downrange dude when you get or even in the field too you know you got a little have that pool so no that's cool and you did that trade-off i did that my last appointment i was with second cab and we did like got to go shoot all the sniper rifles and you know the all the cluster grenades all the 203s 50 cal you know go you go let it have fun man so gotta love yeah gotta love it downrange what uh if you could tell some, if you could talk to your old self or talk to people that are still in the military that are getting ready to get out, what would be some advice you would give them that you wish you would have known yourself as well? You know, just ease up, just relax. Like, every, you know, in the military, everybody's a little uptight um, because, again, the mission, right? And you know, everything is an emergency in the military. It, you know, just when you're in, just enjoy the time that you have. Just. I don't know about everywhere else in the military, but it always seemed like there was a competition to try to get promoted, right? And everybody was worried about that. And it's like, just enjoy the time together. Just, you know, help each other out. Um, because I enjoy being out. I'm a lot more relaxed. But going to work now, it's work. You know, go to work, yeah. do my work, get paid, and go home. You're not bringing it home with you. You're leaving that yeah. at the door. You're not having to bring that BlackBerry or whatever home with yeah. you and take those calls. You're, you're good. Now you're Tony. Yeah. No. My, but my coworkers, that's, they're my coworkers. Right. So that bond that you have in the military, those really close friends, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you're going to get that when you get out. Absolutely. So, man. Unless there are other veterans, unless that you're yeah. working with other veterans and you might have a chance, but yeah, abs absolutely right on that. What, um, you if we did an AAR on uh, get your transition out the military, what's like one sustainment recommendation and improvement you would say that you could add to it? Um, so I was pretty pig headed when I got out uh, because the military takes credit for everything that you do, right? If you do whatever, whatever successes you do, 
it the military did it right it was yeah we all did it right right but if you if you screw up it's all on you right it's all your fault and yeah so getting out i wanted to make sure no 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 no. this whether i succeed or fail it's all me um so i didn't use all the services that were out there right that were offered to me in sfl tap but i should have used more of those um only because i wanted to make sure that hey no i don't want to hear anybody from the army saying that they helped me get my job or they helped me do this no it's all on me so maybe not be so pig-headed um let your pride go and just use everything that you can and just realize that your plan is just that, right? What worked for me might not work for someone else. Right. You know, your plan might not work for, you know, the next 10 people. And just, just understand that. Like we all have our own journey. We all have our way how, of how we want to get to where we want to go to. And, and that's it. It's okay. Whatever your plan is, just follow that plan. Yeah, exactly, man. Because, and have a plan, right? Because, and have a, maybe a backup plan or another backup plan, because you never know what plan is going to not work or change course. So absolutely. You got anyone that you could call out to come on here and share their story that you might be able to challenge? Uh, so um, I don't know if he'll come on, uh, but there's this one young man I, I would like to uh, promote. Um, you could look him up on, on LinkedIn. His name is Derek Jackson. Okay. Derek, he didn't retire. He he got out, I think about nine years, but Derek got out and he was in civil affairs and he started his own farm up here in near in between Raleigh and Fayetteville. And it's okay. all organic. And he got out in 2020, right at the height of uh, the pandemic. Right. Uh, uh, well, he got out like a month before everything shut down. Um, so, but all of his stuff, he, you know, He's raising chickens. He has cows out there and everything's uh, organic. Right. And uh, I'm not sure how he does it, but I know he, he has this uh, service now where he delivers. He's again, he's been on USA today. Um, He's been, I think on, uh, on NBC on the today show Um, and Derek's killing it. And he's, he's a model of what we should aspire to be. Okay. uh, Because he he developed his plan and he followed it and it, it was risky but with the support of his wife and his family they're successful now they just started this uh, uh about six months six months ago they started this uh, kickstarter thing right where they it's like this beef jerky yeah but but i i think it's pork right and it's all organic okay right? and um so it's not like a slim gym where you're gonna eat it and you know 30 minutes later it's like oh Dear God, what did I do? You know, yeah. Um, it's it's a pretty good snack, and I've tried it. I enjoy it. Um, I don't know if you guys might, but you might want to get on LinkedIn and uh, just look up Derek Jackson. And you, he's Afri- African American guy with a big old beard. All right. And, and uh, Derek's awesome. Uh, I, you can look me up on LinkedIn. I think you you have already. Uh, but he's in um, in my network as well. And uh, okay, Derek, Derek is definitely a person. I try to get him on my podcast. Uh, but he was, that's when he was starting his Kickstarter stuff to get this thing launched. Okay. Uh, so he was busy and, and, and so I don't want to bother him. And, uh, I promote his, uh, business out there whenever I can. Uh, I try to promote as many, um, veteran owned businesses as I can, but I'm most proud of Derek. I'm most proud to say that I know that guy. Awesome. Hey, shout out to Derek and his family, man, for doing you guys, doing your thing. And you too, Tony, man, I appreciate you being so vulnerable and, you know, coming on here, sharing your story. And uh, thanks for what you're doing for, for veterans with your podcast and trying to bring the light to the to the mental health aspect of things. Because like you said, it's not really talked about in the military or we can say, well, we were in, you just got out. So you're still validating that, you know, for your experience and your time in. So appreciate what you're doing because 22 is too many, man. You know what I mean? One's too many. Is that's just not the answer to things like that. So if you, I wanted to just ask you if you had anything else that you might want to leave out there for all the listeners, but if not, I appreciate you being on brother. Yeah. Thank, thanks for having me. All right. No problem. Hey, thanks everybody for listening in until next time. Hope you have a great one. Thank you. Take care.